Hello ladies and gentlemen, Adrian here for Digital Dojos. Today we're going to show you how to connect your Siri remote from your Apple TV to your Mac. So a big shout out to Matthias over from Eternal Storm for sponsoring Digital Dojos this week. He is the creator of the freeware that we're taking a look at today. However, there is a great suite of apps for Mac OS X and iOS that you can go ahead and check out over at eternalstorms.at. So if you have one of the new Apple TVs, then you already have this all new Siri based remote. And as you know, it's probably one of the best parts about the new Apple TV. It makes navigating the OS that much more easier. And you can actually port that experience in a sense and use it on your Mac. With Siri remote for Mac, a completely free utility and it allows you to control your Mac with your Apple TV Siri remote uh, easily. You just connect it via Bluetooth. And this is really ideal because it allows you to control basic media functionalities like iTunes, QuickTime, VLC, and even other things like Keynote, PowerPoint, and basic system volume control. Uh, so what's cool about this is if you use your Mac for like a media setup or you just constantly are using your Mac and then, you know, for music and so on and so forth, this is just a really great way to have an external device that you already have, of course, with your Apple TV to act as a controller and it connects all via Bluetooth. So go ahead and download it from the site here, completely free, and then we'll walk through the setup. So first thing you wanna do is open up your downloads, make sure you open up the installer, open up the application and have your Siri remote handy and ready. As you see here, I'll make sure that you want to have your Apple TV turned off so that it doesn't pick up the Bluetooth connection of the remote. From there, you're gonna go ahead and launch system preferences and make sure that your Bluetooth is enabled. So go ahead and make sure Bluetooth is on. And then we're gonna come back to this menu in a second here once we do the actual setup process. So now with the Siri remote, all you wanna do is simply press the menu and volume up button at the same time, just hold them for about five seconds. And then in that same Bluetooth panel, you're gonna see a new device pop up that you can go ahead and connect to. Once you see said device, just go ahead and hit that pair button and then we have connection established and then the Siri remote app should go ahead and show you the basic interface of the Siri remote. So keep in mind here that the Siri remote functionality it, as of right now, it allows for basic media control and all that. However, it doesn't currently support the trackpad support. Uh, so you have to have some button substitution. So for example, you'll see here, press next track is on the right side of the trackpad. You press and hold that for fast forward. Whereas previous track and rewind is actually the menu button. So a little bit of rewind with the buttons, but very basic, you know, your play and pause button is still your play pause. Your actual show hide the Siri remote application becomes your, uh, your, your home screen button in the top right there. And then of course your volume up, volume down still serve as that button. You can go ahead and hide Siri remote in the background if you don't want this interface, but I highly recommend just kind of really quickly going through it and reviewing it. So let's go through some common use cases, of course, with Siri remote. You can, of course, use it to control iTunes, use it to control the basic media functionality of iTunes as far as rewinding, playing, fast forwarding uh, through a track. And of course, you can control the volume of your Mac. This is really ideal for if you're just listening to music in the background and you don't have to constantly be switching through iTunes to do basic you know, switching. You can have that remote handy and use it to mimic the same thing you would do uh, with a mouse or a keyboard and actually free yourself from a mouse or a keyboard so you can be across the room and listening to your music easily with the remote. Another example, as I mentioned earlier, is presentations. You can use Siri Remote to control things like Keynote or PowerPoint, depending on your preference. I use it all the time for practicing PowerPoint, so I let, you know you get to free yourself up from the master keyboard, walk around a bit, um, and then, of course, actually prepare for a presentation in itself. You can go ahead and free yourself from the podium and all that just using this simple Siri Remote that fits nicely in the hand, navigating through your slides the same way you would skip or go through a tracks on something like iTunes. The last example I want to showcase is support for third-party apps. VLC is an app I use all the time on my Mac, and it's a really great for playing back any sort of video file, movies, TV shows, what have you. And Siri Remote easily supports control of you know basic functionality on this as well. So play, pause, rewind, even skipping ahead a couple seconds by just clicking on the trackpad. So super ideal if you have this set up in a media server instance, whether it's a Mac Mini, iMac, what have you. It has support for things like VLC, QuickTime, etc. So again, that all said, whether you're using Siri Remote to connect to your Mac and control just the basic volume up and volume down, you know, to have that convenience, or to control media playback on iTunes, VLC, QuickTime, control slides with Keynote or PowerPoint, uh, you know, it's entirely up to you and it's completely free and super simple to set up as long as you have a Mac with OS 10.11 or newer and Bluetooth 4.0, you're good to go. Again, really great utility to create 
a bridge between a really great remote and your Mac. Be sure to head over to eternalstorms.at to go ahead and check it out. I'll leave a link down below to go ahead and download it. Hope this video helped you out. If it did, be sure to leave that thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And as always, head over to digitaldojos.com for more content. Thanks for watching.